Um, once you have a design you like, I will have another tutorial, maybe in a week or so, maybe two weeks, where we get into all the finer points on the perspective. Um, I already hinted at it earlier, but I think I'll keep this one at research, hard points, design, um, inside view, and anatomy. Those are really critical things to get uh, first. So typically I start with a light marker. In this case, I've got a Copic uh, Zero, T, T0. Doesn't really matter. Warm, gray, toner, neutral makes no difference, but um, working with a light marker really allows me to explore before I commit to um, the line work. So I'm going to start with the front wheel again. Hopefully that just shows up. You know, maybe I should for this video switch it to a one so it shows up a little bit more on camera. Typically if I'm working for myself um, and in my sketchbook I'll use a zero. In this case I'll use a one. Um, so that it's a bit darker. There we go. Shows up hopefully a little more on camera. So, um, wheel, ground line. Now, I have a pet peeve of people that never put in the ground line. I know it's, it's, it's fun to, to, to sketch and get right into just doing the frame, but what I, if you're doing a vehicle, the ground line is actually a really integral part of the design of the vehicle because it helps to communicate the stance. And without this horizontal line at the bottom of the wheels, whether it's a car or a truck or a motorcycle, it's really hard to communicate the stance and the rake of the vehicle when you don't have this relative to the rest of the body or the frame. So I think it's actually really important to include this ground line as a design element um, and it gives us a reference. So without that horizontal reference, we can't start to indicate the rake. So here's uh, one wheel, that's my front wheel. Add one a little bit to a rear wheel. Okay, and if you want to go ahead and draw in the rim size. Okay, and when you're working with a, a marker, you can be really, I don't want to say you'd be sloppy, I'm always trying actually to be as accurate as I can. But um, I know I'm going to come put lines back over the top of this that are going to be much tighter. So you can be really loose. All right, I'm going to zoom in just a, a little bit now that I've set the size of the sketch. So hopefully you can see it a little bit easier. And then I'll try not to move it. Okay, let me uh, set my focus. All righty, so there we go. Wheels, wheelbase. Um, motor in the rear wheel. Okay, I'm going to put my foot peg is going to go somewhere around here. My rear swing arm is going to go somewhere very close to that. So I'll just put in some lines. Um, I would like to put my saddle sort of right in here and maybe sloping out. This is going to have kind of a long tail on it. There's my line that's raking downward. And see, it's the relationship of that line in relation to horizontal that makes this look like it's raking downward. It will still always relate to the wheels, you know, if that's gone, but that makes it so much stronger. That's why I like to keep that um, handlebar placement. So I go up, I'm going to add about half a wheel. I'm up in here somewhere. Okay, so I've very lightly indicated that brake line. The next one I'll probably make a little bit heavier because it's actually the rim touching the um, tire. And if we think about the light coming down like this, down here in this little cross section, it might create a nice shadow underneath. So now I can kind of do the reverse of what I did with that little line on the tire. And I might put a lot of weight down here and then go lighter at the top. And remember your fork. Okay, don't want to draw through that. So really heavy on the bottom, okay? And so I've got a heavy line up against one that's fading out. The fading out is my tire uh, cross-section, then the rim, and then I have sort of an interior silhouette line. Probably, I don't know if I'm gonna put a spoke on this yet, so maybe I wanna wait. Um, now I'm gonna probably, let's draw this guy, let's draw the fork. two parallel lines. I don't know what's going to happen here. Maybe my light's going to overlap, so I'll leave the front edge light for now. And wherever you don't know um, what you want to add, just 
draw very, very lightly. Um, where you know things are going to be dark and you're at your final line, like right here, I could go ahead and make that dark. We're sort of sculpting up and in, and that could be a, a little chamfer on that bottom edge. So here's the silhouette line on the bottom, and then this is an interior chamfer, like it's just been laid back a little bit, like we had a, a corner, we had the bottom of our swing arm like this, and here was the silhouette on center, and then this just got shaved off. So we see another line on the inside, and that line is this one. Okay, take that back, I'm gonna punch that out to get out to the full width. Picking up our axle, continue the silhouette. Okay, there we go, I'm not gonna worry about a wheel design. So that gets me pretty close. Now at this point, um, I probably start to think about some interior shapes, some little more design lines. Um, so I have two ways of doing that. Let's see if I can show that here first as an example. So what I'm talking about, let's, let's zoom in. Let's see if I can zoom this anymore. A little bit. Let me set the focus. Okay, right in here, those are the little lines that I'm talking about. So those are the little interior form breaks. So this line right here, coming out of there, this one, this one, that one, um, even here. And what you'll see a lot of times, you'll see even in those little, wherever there's a form change, I usually put a little crosshatch indication. And so uh, it's very subtle. You can put just a few very, very light lines. If it's a sharp break, of course, you can put a stronger line. So um, I try to indicate those with just a little bit of cross hatching and shading. It's more of a, it's not sort of a final line drawing technique, it's more of a way to remind myself um, that after I scan this and I go into the computer that um, there's a form change there, or I had thought there was a form change, and so then I'll try to render it and see how it works out. So let me just reset for this one. So where might that happen? Well, it could happen through here. You can actually see the marker starting to work for us. So right through here, I might have an interior shape that kind of echoes um, the silhouette. And I'll do that a lot, is that take the silhouette and just, let's just call it an echo, just move inward. So you see there's a little break right here. That break could actually continue into here, into the frame. And if I want it to be light, what I would do um, and treat it more like a softer radius, I would just put multiple lines with a little bit of cross hatching. If I want it to be a sharp line, just keep the line lighter and more precise. You know, that right there doesn't have to turn back here, it could keep going. So maybe I'm going to stretch that interior line all the way up. And that tells me that this part right through here is narrower or has a little relief to where this overlaps. Now those don't work together. See, this is pinching right here, so I'm just gonna fix that up a little bit. Again, it's a working sketch. It doesn't matter if you've got some lines that are off. You just, after you scan it, just erase those. It's no big deal. Uh, let's say I wanted this. See, this is nice and soft here at Silhouette. If I wanted to continue that into the frame, and then this is even softer over here, 